see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. I don't care what society thinks. They're nothing anyway. They're no better than me. Until we have a safe word, we will not stop. Have you ever thought what it would be like to see a person's head amputated? Think of things so horrible that the human mind cannot imagine them. See all this and more when you see on stage in person that crazy makes up. I like being set apart from people. I like to be hated. Safe word with Jason Rouse. Be nice. Be nice, Brian. Hi, hey everybody. Uh, it's Jason Rouse, and welcome to the Safe Word uh, podcast. Uh, on the show today, the uh, one and only uh, Brian Redband. What's up, buddy? How are you today? Good. How are you? <laughs> it's great to be in the uh, break room of Hot Topic. Uh, <laughs> everybody always goes to Hot Topic on me. Isn't there anything more levels to me than a, uh, a, a wannabe punk rock nostalgia? Is that what it is? Not for me. I've always enjoyed all this stuff, but you, you like more the friendly end of children's entertainment where I loved all the things that scared me as a kid. Yeah, so you, you went towards the, 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 the scary stuff. You know, as friendly as I could go would be Beetlejuice, <laughs> but I'd start around Freddy Krueger and work my way I, through I never, that. I never got into horror that much when, when I was younger. I, I, uh, I mean, sure, I've, I saw a lot of the horror movies growing up, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't really like them too much. I didn't like being scared, you know? No, I I was a very timid, shy person and uh, easily uh, startled and scared. So I did, got tired of that, and I just put so much horror into my head to overcompensate for my uh, low self-esteem. So I... <laughs> more or less clockwork orange myself to a degree right not to mention when i first started doing comedy people tend to go out of their way to show me the worst of the worst i know you've seen some of my terrible things uh, brian won't even look at my phone mm -mm. or uh I'm answer it. no more video phone calls for me no no <laughs> i don't do any phone calls though i mean it's, yeah. it's so funny there's so many uh people like Willie Montgomery, a perfect example. Mm. The motherfucker can't text you. He has to call you, it seems like. And I never answer the phone. And I, you know, you think after maybe a hundred times of me never answering my phone, he would just kind of stop doing that. But no, he's. People don't understand that you probably answer a quadruple amount of emails, phone calls, text messages. People are hitting you up via YouTube. Yeah, you know, uh, what's the mor what's your morning like? Uh, well, it's a lot better now because I, I think a, a while ago I think I learned this from Joe, mm. where I just stopped feeling bad if I didn't reply to a text or 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 a message or a phone call. You just got to live your life, and mm -hmm. I think now I, I mean my my shit's usually airplane mode all day for the most part and uh i'll probably get maybe 30 text messages 40 a day yeah uh different people and i probably reply to two but you have to look at them all uh well you don't what i mean is I like do, you but I, review you yeah, i do review but i like it would be days like oh i forgot i never even looked at this message <laughs> exactly I, I i don't even care anymore and, I, and it's probably the worst and people probably think i'm an asshole and stuff uh but i just don't i don't i have to do it. for my own health i can't i can't fucking deal with it anymore and it's more or less dirty laundry yeah it's like how do you want to start your day going through people's complaints gripes right. and stuff it has nothing to do with your your day-to-day -day life and now you're being yanked back into the uh internet ether to deal with that drama right and there's plenty of drama uh in the uh stand-up comedy community yeah there's that and then there's people that i guess you would call them palmers you yeah. know and I, can i get on your show can i do this and, yeah and just like so many things uh that's like man you're you're asking a lot for me you know like there's there's people asking me like hey man uh, i was wondering you know if, could you give this to joe rogan uh you know and see if i can get on this 10 podcast. years ago people and, were doing and, that i know and there's they're they're even it's even worse now i remember 
early in the in the rise of Death Squad, Ari telling me, like, no, I can't ask Joe yeah. for UFC tickets. Right. <laughs> yeah. What are you fucking talking about? It, it, you would be surprised. And, and, and it's also like things like, uh, I'm not, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but imagine just like, uh, you know, almost an open mic or comic. Go, hey, man, you know, I'm going to be in Austin. And do you think there's any way I could get on Rogue? I'm starting my own <laughs> podcast. And it's like, dude, he doesn't even know who the fuck you are. I don't, I barely even know who the fuck you are. And, <laughs> like, why People would people tell me, they go, you should go on joe's show oh really oh it should <laughs> oh just it's a good idea jay yeah that's yeah. great it might be it's you know i always say that it's like doing the howard stern show and johnny carson all at the same time yeah it definitely is it's crazy mm -hmm. it's been uh I mean, he had know, zuckerberg on yesterday i know i know jesus as uh uh you know who who would have thunk yeah and you know but good for zuckerberg yeah. i i think that's the longest public conversation that he's probably had in public outside of a uh, seminar or an introduction or, or yeah <laughs> yeah it was it's interesting how he, his mannerisms and how he talks is so creepy i mean not creepy i guess but it seems off-putting like he doesn't i don't know if it's his voice or elon's got that too yeah i think it's a genius yeah um there's not a lot of range in the emotion right but it's very thoughtful and uh, articulate. Mm -hmm. You could tell the brain's working while it's talking. Yeah. Totally. And I think those people are deeper thinkers because their bodies aren't so ravaged by manic behavior and right. emotional right. Uh, chaos. But uh, speaking of chaos, I want to go back to the 90s because oh, uh, we've, we've talked about this a little bit and um, there was an era of music, the alternative rock and roll scene um you said trent reznor's from your hometown trent reznor, reznor's from ohio he's and from ohio yeah yeah he uh i think it's cleveland he was from but um is that where you ran in manson at, at uh, when he was opening for nine inch nails no no i ran in manson i i just met when he was doing a show in columbus ohio mm. and uh was this 98 no, 96. this is probably, I was in college, so this is probably 95. Okay. And yeah. he, uh, he like, where, where I was living, there was this place called Newport Music Hall. I think it's still there. And uh, anytime there was a band that I liked, we would just kind of walk over there and, like, hang out in mm -hmm. the back and stuff like that. And Manson was there, and uh, he, like... Uh, the haircuts you said yeah god i'm like even drawing a blank on it um oh so i uh i got photo passes i, I had this whole thing i did it with trent reznor i did it with uh ween and stuff writing well, a scam yeah it was like a little scam where i i'd write the uh the i wrote the uh the guys that make the what was it the publisher uh of the records and stuff like that uh i wrote them and it's like hey you know mine is brian i have this newsletter called ninhead instead of deadhead press pass yeah and you know can i get press passes and interviews and stuff and they were like send me a copy of it and so i was like fuck and so i had to go to the library and make up like a fake newsletter using xerox machines and magazines and, and wrote fake articles uh, or like letters to the editor you know and stuff and uh they loved it so then they said hey you know anything on nothing records uh you could get a photo pass and free tickets and stuff so that included nine snails included marilyn manson Papa Papa itself. Itself and, did uh, you see Papa Lee itself because yeah, yeah. they didn't do too many no, shows and, and prick was another one that i i liked but i think they only released one album i think um but Man manson i got to take photos and i met him and then he uh invited me onto his bus <laughs> and then how old are you like 18 i was like 20 okay and you defend yourself right and uh, and he's like uh, you live nearby and he's like yeah and, and he's like go go get me a razor i'm like uh, okay and i'm thinking razor for like coke or something i don't know what the hell sure. he's doing but the bus was just surrounded by i would say 200 uh, fans mostly yeah. chicks yeah like goth girls and stuff With cuts on their wrists right yeah and so i run over to my house got a razor gave it to him and then he goes all right watch this brian like a straight razor or oh no, no like a gillette, gillette. okay gillette. Yeah, yeah. and and he goes watch this and he goes who wants me to shave a circle on their head or shave their head 
And this one girl with really nice long hair. Oh. She's like, oh, please do it to me. Yeah. And so he just like starts shaving like a circle in the <laughs> middle of this poor girl's head. And at the same time, there was girls underneath his tires, so they they couldn't drive away. Like they were laying down. Like that's how crazy it was. Like Beatlemania shit. And, and this is way before Antichrist Superstar came out. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't remember the years, yeah. but yeah. And it was just so crazy. I, I thought he was kind of a dick for doing that, though. Honestly, but no, he he, he seemed cool. He seemed normal. He, he was a lot more normal than you thought. You know. Well, he also started out as a journalist. Oh, he did. Yeah, that's how he used to work for. Um, he was a journalist for uh, Ray Gun. Remember that Alt uh, yeah, magazine? Yeah, yeah. magazine? He wrote. Yeah. He had an interview with um, uh, Trent Reznor as a journalist, but he also had uh, interviewed uh, Axl Rose, and he was discussing the fact that uh, he was interested in starting a band himself, and that they were interested in covering uh, Charles Manson songs, mm. which. Brian Warner said, a.k.a. Marilyn Manson, uh, said that in that interview, well, in that discussion, that Axl Rose stole the idea. So when the uh, the spaghetti incident mm -hmm. came out, there was a Manson song, or a, a Charles Manson. Wow. Have you heard Charles? You know he auditioned for the Monkees. He did? Yeah. Oh, he tried is there to, a video of that? There's, uh, I don't think there's actually an audition tape. Damn, that would be cool. That would be pretty cool, especially after seeing uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, mm -hmm. uh, the Manson family right. segment of it yeah. was great. Speaking of Hollywood, I know you don't miss it. I don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's been a few times where I was like, all right, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go back to LA for you know a bit. and. Mm. And then I talked myself out of it. I'm like, why? Why, why am I going there? It when did is. you move? 2008? Um, I was 30. And I'm 48. So whatever that is. Oh, so okay. 18 years ago, I moved there. Was this... I know that you would you know, initially got into this whole comedy game via Stanhope. Yeah. Uh, Stanhope and Rogan. But I met Stanhope online. And I used to do. You said you were a fan, or were you offering technical think, advice think, or something? I or? think how I met them is through their message boards. I was really yeah. big on their message boards, and then I started uh, helping Doug. Like I made his website for him once, uh -huh. uh, and I and I started making like videos for him, you know. And uh, Rogan saw the videos. I was like, oh, I want you to make those videos for me, and that's how I got Joe's started. show. Yeah, I remember <laughs> the year I'd moved to los angeles i think i saw the the tail end of you with a camera at the store yeah yeah and that was around the time ari's situation unfolded ari's, all that stuff i moved to la within the year kramer the carl's mencia incident <sighs> uh, and, and about a half a dozen other things were i was like what the fuck is going on here when I'm, you moved to la did you go right to the comedy store of course yeah of okay. course that was always the end game i, I the only reason i wanted a, a green card is so that i could live and uh, perform at the comedy store right and um you know what it was like in 2007 mm -hmm. empty yeah i went in there i didn't know it was after mencia it was really empty for like <laughs> the instant yeah i i remember walking in there in the evening and there was no but no staff i was like is this even a, a running business right. there was nobody in there it was completely dead and then and those were the years that me and joe and everyone didn't go there anymore yeah like, so it was like it had no it looked like an old wax museum that people used to yeah. frequent in the 80s right but uh that changed very quickly mm -hmm. now especially the last five or six years that i was there I don't know if it was a combination of the success of the show that you were doing with Joe and the Netflix thing that kind of followed in. There was there was a series of bumps where all of a sudden, well, first of all, I just every day, every Tuesday, when was Kill Tony? And then Monday. And then um, Tripoli would do like uh, a show after yours or so. Or was it Tuesday sometimes or... Anyway, 500 people coming out, 500 people coming in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and the comedy store has been through those ups and downs so many times. Like, uh, I don't know what it is now, but I'm guessing it would be kind of more of a down right now. Or at least, you know, it, it, a lot of the lineups and stuff, like, it seems like the same lineup every day. You know, it, it's, it's same 12 people yeah, same in 12 three people. clubs. Yeah. So I, I, I wonder, I, I'm thinking about going back there in October. 
uh, after Skankfest, I might swing by over there and check it out. But again, I'm st- I'm like really trying to make myself want to go. I, I have no desire. I keep using the fact that I have some things in storage that I'd like to bring back oh, yeah? here. But it's like all that book the plane ticket and then there's most of my friends have either left they either went to uh nevada uh um in austin and a lot of people went to um arizona you know there was everyone just kind of splintered off Mm. waiting for the smoke to clear right but it was terrifying being in L.A. during COVID. Yeah. It was, terif- it was and it's terrifying now, man. It, it's so violent there now. I was watching something this morning when I woke up. It just, uh, they, you know, they have those takeovers now where they just like... A, storm. Storm. Storms. Like, yeah, and like uh, smashing grabs. And then they have those things where the cars are just like doing burnouts and yeah. there's hundreds of people all just... It's the purge. Yeah, it's, it's just like the purge. Totally like the purge. Beverly Hills is more dangerous than Compton right now, which is crazy. Yeah. You know, just people getting mugged and, and shit like that. I think because the... the it, the infrastructure, that shaky wedding cake that is Hollywood, right. all the icings off of it. So, you know, downtown Los Angeles was the designated nightmare spot. Right. Now, these people have Which been is weird. All disp- yeah, a lot of people don't know that. I like, wanted to move like, downtown. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles, it, it sucks. It's scary. And even when I lived there, I think I only went downtown, you know, 16 years. I think I only went downtown maybe four times. Because it's not, uh, why would I've, you want to go down there? I foolishly, I think it was coming after uh, we did the AVN Awards at the uh, the Death Squad show at the Hard Rock mm. uh, Club Vinyl. I think I flew, I got a drive in and I decided to take a bus back because it was, a, it's a relatively short, a four and a half hour drive from LA to Vegas. The bus was three hours late. There was a guy on there with an infant. It was like 150 oh, on the geez. bus. The kid was crying and sweating in this guy's arm. The the delays, it took me about a four-hour or five-hour drive. It took me uh, probably about 12 hours to get home. Wow. It dropped me off at downtown Los Angeles at like four in the morning, and it was pure chaos at that Scary. bus station. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, Venice Beach has kind of turned into... Venice is bad now also. Yeah. The boardwalk and stuff like that. and Yeah, everything just fucking sucks. And, and like, I don't know. I, th- I think it will probably get better, but I, I, I don't think it's not for a while. I think it's still on the decline. It seems like it's still getting bad and bad. I think bad. in five years. Mm-hmm. I think the city has to sort itself out with right. its regulations and their politics and stuff, which I, I don't follow but i just know from the people that live there that are kind of just over it but they're so passive and stuff you know we're clear here you know here in austin like they really take their uh american rights very seriously Mm -hmm. i don't know how many loaded fire i don't know how many times i've seen someone open up their trunk and there was a a machine gun next to a spare tire yeah just hardware and have you got out to fire some guns no, I haven't. I haven't done any of the f- fun gun stuff here in Texas. Uh, I, I want to get a gun. I just, <laughs> yeah, it, me too. It's it, it's so cool because out here you don't even have to like go to a gun store. Somebody could just give you a gun, yeah. like a gift to you a gun. Yeah, <laughs> and it's so weird to me. You know, it's you would think <laughs> with that those kind of I wouldn't say lax laws and stuff, but having access to firearms. There should be a lot more shootings than they are. Right. People think there's a lot here, but with the accessibility to just firearms, right. You would just there, there should be a lot more. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I mean, it's weird because I'm not really concerned about shootings out here or anything like that. I actually feel it's even. It, I like the idea of more people having guns, so when something does happen, there's a lot more fucking people with guns. You know, totally. <laughs> uh, and say, they have also because they train and they have safety. It, they, mm-hmm. So you're not do you're not dealing with people that are panicking right. that are going to make some silly moves. Right. They can handle the situation. I just always pictured somebody breaking into a car and being caught, and then all the neighboring cars all drawing yeah. guns at the yeah. same time. You mm-hmm. you really can. Uh, you don't know where you're going into. There's a couple of times where I've avoided some confrontations because. I don't know if somebody has a gun here. Right. So people tend to be a little more friendlier because you might get shot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like it. I, I, I'm up for it. I'm not... I think Texas has some good things about it. I also think they have some horrible, dumb, stupid things. Like, you know, the abortion stuff is just sure. fucking dumb. And, and it seems like they're... 
they really do have religions really pumped into any everyone's heads out here. Yeah. Did you hear that new law that 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 just came out where, uh, like I think schools now have to have like a thing posted on all the schools that's uh, God bless yeah or something like that and God we trust or something like that some they weird. start them young and, and what's funny is that uh, people are upset about it so there's because I guess it's something like if if somebody gets sent that to put in a school they have to put it up or something like that it's some weird like if somebody sends a in God we you trust if that's even what it is you have the school has to put it up it's somewhere so people have been putting uh, sending them arabic uh oh religious icons yeah. and stuff buddha <laughs> why so not just like like you know like so like mount rushmore of all your favorite yeah, icons yeah like you know Allah, muhammad and stuff like that yeah do some like full-on like virgin mary dressed as victoria's secret see that's not gonna fly no, you can't, do, you can't that. do that but you did you go to a school that was catholic no or? no 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 i mean i grew up my mom is pretty religious and i had to go do the whole you know same thing every sunday in the catechism yeah. or whatever the fuck it was uh but once I graduated the catechism or whatever the fuck, uh, I didn't have to go anymore. It was yeah. up, up to me. And then my pastor died, so I was like, well, I'm not going to go to another church or do anything. Yeah, it's kind of like changing yeah. doctors. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to break yeah. in a new God. Yeah, I never was really too much into it. I mean, except when I was forced to go as a kid. What uh, toys do you still have left that from when you were a kid? I have, well, that's one of the saddest things ever because... <laughs> Out of all when, when, I moved, when I moved to California, I you lost a box. I, I had stuff? had a bunch of boxes of GI Joes, Transformers, all the good stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put it in my mom's basement. You know, it's safe there. She has a yeah. huge basement. She's not even gonna know it's there. And literally, when my nephews were born, they got into it, and I went back once for Christmas, and I just saw Optimus Prime with no head and just like broken GI Joes and yeah. And After thirty years, they're not toys anymore no i got so pissed off my mom just doesn't understand so it, it, it even made me more mad there's you know i had an old box of bmx magazines like really old magazines and i i squirreled them away in an attic and then i was like listen i know that no one's going up there as long as they're dry they should and i went up 10 years later looking for him and my grandfather had tossed the whole bundle out <sighs> i was so pissed and now i see all this shit showing up on media social media for mm. f it's not even the money it's it's now I, I can see the magazines and and things that i had as a kid are now being retooled and repackaged and sold mm -hmm. for crazy i don't know bmx bicycles right now of are gone up like rolex watches really all that stuff from the 80s oh, wow. people are paying insane loads of scammers do, too. do you don't you you like biking a lot but yeah you, you always post videos and stuff you don't have a bike though i don't my see. bikes uh, oh. in there yeah okay. i didn't want to embarrass myself too much with kids toys right. i'm a 50 year old man who rides a bmx bike <laughs> yeah you don't you don't mess with mongoose man or or, uh, or, or still diamond, thing. diamondback I, diamondback <laughs> i don't know if those are still companies but for sure i know i'm very aware of that i you know skateboarding and bmx for me was like because I hated hockey players. Mm. It would that was the thing. Like I, I, that was a rebellious thing to do against organized sports. I hated it. So we were just skate kids. Yeah, I was a skate kid Vandals. as a BMX guy. Yeah, I liked the BMX a little bit more. I loved it because it was like always about getting the lightest bike. And I remember sure. when like I think the Diamondback came out. I was like, oh my god, look yeah. at that! <laughs> and you try and lift it with your, with your pinky to finger. show off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit was fun, man. I I, I do miss those a lot. Now I'm into e-bikes, and one of the two of the e-bikes I got remind me of having like an old BMX bike. You know, well the, the seating's the same, right? Yeah, the you, seating and I, the big fat tires. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, is it electrical? Yeah, e-bikes. Because there's so many brands now. Yeah, I got I got three or four e-bikes now. I have two super. No, I have one super seventy three. And then, uh, which is like the one that looks just like Didn't retro. Did you get custom or something? Did they do some modifications on it? Not really, but you can, a lot of people, a lot of people mod them out. Yeah. And then I got two other juiced bikes and I love it, man. It's fun. I, I don't ride that much as much as I should though, just because it's, uh, it's been so fucking hot that I don't want to do anything outside. I, I pedal around in the heat. I prefer, yeah, 
I always run and ride bikes around here. I rode. I yeah, t- but you're always wearing a bra. Or I'm wearing a, t- a tube top. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say anything? <laughs> He's always mean. <laughs> <laughs> remember when brian uh, pushed the arcade game on my leg <laughs> when we were moving out of that studio oh, yeah i tried to kill you that was that was terrifying i'm lucky i had my elbows under me yeah you almost died from pac-man i wanted that uh the uh zombie nazi mannequin that you had but mm-hmm. i'm like i don't like how do you move that from a to b without causing a C? oh i know it, it is pretty crazy and I moved it a few times, and then when I moved to Austin, I was like, you know what? I I need to just get rid of this. I mean, I love it, but it's just too much. And so uh, I gave it to a a comic. I forget who took it. But I remember I put it in their truck, and its legs are just, like, hanging up out the side. It looked like just, like, a dead body. Yeah, Uh, I I was carrying it, and we had someone had made a little video of it, and it looked – actually, I think it was you. And it it totally looks like you're trying to sneak a body out. Right. Yeah, because it's just, it's, I guess for people that don't know what it is, it's just this huge mannequin. Actually, a, a Hollywood movie maker, he uh, made it, and it just looks like a Nazi uh, zombie. You know? Yeah, like he military. Dead, yeah. And he's got the zombie face, and it looks pretty realistic, and it's tall. You could actually plug it in, and its eyes glow yellow and stuff. It would have been perfect for this place. I know, I know. That's why I was <laughs> like, fuck. I've already been on Amazon looking for various right. kind of Halloween stuff. Right. Do uh, uh, you got any big plans for Halloween? You gonna we, we, got Kill, we got Kill Tony on Halloween Ooh. this year. Uh, Where will it be on Halloween? Falcon. It's going to be at Falcon. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I always like dressing up, but... Uh, I, I've been looking a little bit here and there. I can't think of anything this year. I might go. Oh, you, I, I might go as Wendy because uh, I didn't go as Wendy as last Halloween. That was like Secret Show or something. Who was? You had a really great. Oh, it was uh, Rick and Morty. What was? was you pickle uh, Rick. Pickle Rick. Yeah. Pickle but you Rick, made that yeah. whole thing, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. It was pretty good. You Frankenstein it pretty pretty. Uh, yeah, that was hard to do because it was when Pickle Rick first came out, and there wasn't Pickle Rick co- costumes yet. Yeah. So I just had to get like a pickle costume then i had to get like werewolf hands mm-hmm. and because if you look at pickle rig it's like just a frankenstein of different like body parts and stuff like that it's crazy yeah. no i was blown away people you know i was even late on family guy right but it got to a point uh especially with cartoons because you know you get blasted with you got to see this new show and live action stuff i could take it or leave it but when i see a good like i love mr pickles Mm. Do you know Mr. Adult Swim? It's about yeah. the du- dog is mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the devil. And I, haven't, all. I haven't seen that. It's in a while. very gross and uh, and Pickles. over the top. I forgot about that. Uh, and uh, like uh, all that JJ Villiard stuff. Yeah, I love He's, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, King Star King. That's one of my favorite. King Star King. Yeah, is my favorite. Yeah, that's super. I went trippy. to. I went to uh, when I think King Star King when they finished it. Uh, they had a party for all the animators and stuff at, at the at Tip Mouse Swim. or whatever it uh-huh. was called. And I got to go to that, and I had no idea what it was. It was just like a friend. Uh, he was he worked there. And he invited me, and they we watched the whole thing there, and it was just like free drinks and shit, and it was so cool. It was It's like, so great. I I never understand what the pitch meetings in are for shows like that. It's mm-hmm. like hard to – you can – until you see it animated, because it, there's so much psychedelic – uh folding over time and and the characters are always you know one of them is a pancake right yeah or the make the mcdonald's yeah character. he's kind of like the hamburger yeah, but hamburger, made out of pancakes yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of breasts mm-hmm. and uh a lot of ripping bongs a lot of cool like things like you look in the background and you see somebody like jacking somebody yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 cool or like stuff. some flowers with pits you, on you, them or you something. know what it reminds me of it reminds me of the doodles that i used to draw on my notebook in like middle or in high school you know like just like the very yeah. like they look like that kind of style of art you know very like it was totally high school textbook cover yeah. doodles yeah who so that guy clearly made it it's a lot like some of the artwork oh, you yeah, got yeah. in your yeah, shirt. Yeah, a lot like this actually. Yeah. Uh Shop Desqua, by the way. You got new coffee <laughs> mugs? Oh heck yeah. Those things are great. I always look at your merch and to find out what's only in black and white. And right. I finally found a, a cup. The black one. The black and I white. I should have brought cup. you one. I I will definitely get one of those cups. Yeah. Everything else has to be black. Black, yeah. Yeah. The only thing I have a color is uh Brody's shirt. Yeah, we were talking about this last night where 
I've ha- I want you to do like a 15 minute like like uh like a clean set. If you know Jason's of course his comedy is very dark and dirty. <laughs> and uh I just want you to like I want to see what a clean set from Jason Rouse is like and Christmas. then ha- and then have you yeah exactly and have you wear like a white, like a white you know turtleneck maybe like a sweater or, or something like that. <laughs> maybe just William Montgomery's clothes. Yeah, just put, just wear William Montgomery's his clothes. His dress shoes. What, what a, you know, All right, give me give me five nice subjects to talk about uh picnics picnics okay <laughs> and i pro um can i what's the deal with picnics it's not gonna be that bad <laughs> it won't be that bad picnics picnics uh <laughs> come on be nice <laughs> okay be nice uh <laughs> picnics um because i'm gonna follow up on this this is uh this is a deal okay picnics um nice be nice <laughs> be nice. all the things i'm thinking of like i, was I like, know you i know try not to be mean. give me a, give me uh, give me some elbow room to... flower arrangements no man <laughs> come on well that's the deal with flowers no because you'll uh, uh, immediately go to uh funerals uh right um yeah what car washes <laughs> you know i don't drive you know i've never driven ever that's so weird to me yeah. don't you want to drive i don't know what that is i have a bit of a phobia that's part of the why because i have a, a a weird uh it's aids that's not that's not <laughs> anything to do with driving i just don't want to run anybody down in a fit oh. mm. so you have rage issues and you think that when you're driving you'd be like it's not rage. an issue if i don't drive i've never seen you have get angry ever i know because i have rage issues L.A. was definitely a test of my patient, yeah. but I was a very uh, explosive, um, fueled person for forever, for a long time until I started doing comedy and I started to find my equilibrium. But I yeah. could see you being like a little punk when you were doing drugs, and son of like a that. bastard. Yeah, you you seem like you could be a menace little rat. to society, <laughs> vandal, oh, fucking just dick. pure chaos. It was you know the movie Gummo. Mm-hmm. You know the movie Kids? Mm-hmm. Rub those together. Wow. That's what it was like. Kids. Yeah. Good soundtrack. It was brutal. But, you know, I, I was a product of my environment. I had crooked do You, have, you don't have any sisters or anything like that. I do. I have yeah. a younger brother. You met my brother, oh, Andrew. That's right. He, uh, he came out to L.A. literally, I think, six months before COVID kicked off. I said, you're lucky. You saw Hollywood maybe in its prime in its right. in your lifetime i just noticed you don't have a grill anymore no i took the bottom out yeah yeah it was if i wore the tops it was too much of a distraction right i can always tell when he's getting ready to be mean because <laughs> he looks at you like and you don't do anything <laughs> she yeah that i that was always weird talking to you when you had that grill in because it's oh. so because i just constantly would just stare at it and like why is that in his mouth i shot that <laughs> i shot that pilot with um favorman with at that punch out uh comedy oh, yeah, thing yeah. that we did mm-hmm. and i had a suit on and i came to the store and you looked at me you says never do that again <laughs> so there's no pleasing you there's no pleasing you you know i don't like grills i, I think it's funny when hans got a grill re- did he recently and it's too big for him so he puts it in his room, and when he talks he's like hey, yeah, yeah like jared it, shit there's a whole, it's a commitment mm-hmm. and it's usually uh anti-social behavior if you're uh white right it it does uh it's clearly a statement of like i don't care right yeah that's why I get a teardrop tattoo. Oh, don't do that on the back of my. I am leg. surprised. No, you, I, I'm surprised you don't have anything on your face, though. Look, no, nothing. What was your first tattoo? First one was this. These little stars out here, which is a kind of a standard thing. My buddy Jeff Beckman at Sink and Ink, and then he finished it off, and then I just started kind of putting it together. But, is there a tattoo uh, that you hate? Not really. You yeah. know, it's that kind of cliche thing. It's my journey. I rem- certain tattoos remind me of things, but nothing below the arms, no neck, no face. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. But everybody's get. Isn't it weird who's getting face and neck tattoos I think, now? I think all the tattoos lately have been such embarrassing garbage because it all looks like prison ink, you know? like, like It looks like stickers. Yeah. Stickers. Yeah. It looks like the, their faces look like the bottom of a skateboard. Right. It's so dumb. But anyway, but... It, I used to be 
you know, that was visual tattoos were more or less a message of like, give me some distance. I've, uh, this is my story. And uh, I've clearly, you know, everybody knew the teardrop meant you killed somebody. Killed somebody right. But now uh, the guy at Starbucks has a teardrop. Right. Yeah. It's not, uh, this is the thing though. I remember going to a, a leather store in Toronto and talking to the owner about, um, just generally uh, these kind of sex parties, like fetish clubs and stuff, mm -hmm. where they kind of are like in the fashion aspect of it. And he told me, he goes, yeah, you know, when I started in this business in the, in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, you know, a dog collar was like a thing. But now teenagers are buying them at Hot Topic. Right. And it's all BDSM stuff, but they don't know what it is connected to. Right. They it's don't, fashionable. Yeah. Like a teardrop tattoo. That's one of the dumbest ones ever. I think anybody that has gang-like uh, markings on them should be subjected to gang politics. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So little 18-year-old Sally with her little prison <laughs> tattoo. You, you have to kill a bitch. Yeah, you got, yeah, you, you got to do. You got to join the Crips or the Bloods. Mm -hmm. There's no in between. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's been a weird couple of years here. Because mm -hmm. you've been here, what, just coming up on two years? Yeah, in, uh, I guess, November of this year will be two years. Yeah, December for December, me. December, November. Because yeah. you'd come here to fill in for Jamie, for Kanye. Yeah. And then just told me, like, the next day, I bought a house. Yeah, it was very unexpected. How did you, how did... Like Janice. Janice didn't even know about it. Like, oh. Jan <laughs> J J Whoa. How like rude. I went there for like a week or I was here for like a week or two weeks, you know, fill in for Jamie when he had COVID did like a bunch of JRE podcasts and stuff. And then I had a lot of downtime and I was just at a hotel and uh, I was like, you know what? I'm just going for fun. Look at houses. And How'd you end up in Pflugerville? Cause that's not close to downtown or. Anywhere. Well, I want, I didn't want to be downtown. I wanted to do, yeah. I wanted to be, I always like being a little bit outside of the downtowns cause I like peace and quiet. And then when I want to be somewhere, yeah. I, you know, drive there. And I was just looking at like all the hot spots. There was a lot of uh, like, well, this area is, you know, b blowing up all new construction and stuff. And so I was looking at Pflugerville and Huddo because a lot of people were telling me like Huddo is the next big thing. Uh, is out that here. north of Pflugerville? Yeah, and okay. that's pretty much where I live. I live on like the the border of Pflugerville and Hutto, so it's pretty much it, like I, I take a right. I'm in Hutto, take okay. a left. I'm in Pflugerville, and I looked at one house and it was kind of cool. It had a pool and stuff, but it was just. Uh, but then I went into this house that I bought, and I was just like, oh my god, this house is brand new. And it's got it's like the whole thing's like tech, you know, like yeah. it's just very tech house, huge ceiling, huge ceiling, yeah. huge house, the cavernous rooms, right, and like not that it wasn't that expensive you know yeah. and i was like fuck it this is like the perfect house and so i applied for a loan got the loan pretty easy and i was like well i remember calling janice i was like i i just put that you know i think i just bought a house <laughs> <laughs> so we're moving uh, luckily she said yes because <laughs> yeah i know because that's a uh there must have been a point when you were committed to this purchase financially it's like Oh, I better talk to the wife about this. She <laughs> might have some other plans for our well, future. Well, I think I already knew that. Cause I, I think we had kind of talked about things. Getting out. Getting, more just getting out of L.A. or in, getting in Burbank. We lived there for so long, and, we, we, you know, our, our apartment Same sucked. place. Yeah, say it sucked. And, you know, we had rats at one point. You were like 10 years in the same spot, though, weren't you? Yeah, more than that. I think I was yeah. like four, 14 years in that spot. Right on the corner. Yeah. And it was, it was just nice, but it was very small, very old. It was an older house. And, you know, when you get a certain age, it's just like you don't want to live in shit, you know? And that's what I felt like we were doing. It's like the plumbing's got to work. Yeah, you know everything. Like, like, yeah, and, no. it, it is weird because you, when you when you live that way, you never feel like you kind of grew up. Like I, you're like I feel like I'm still a little kid, you know. Uh, yeah, do, like a dorm. Yeah, where everything's yeah. fucked up and always dirty. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it, I have. It's been so nice living here and having a house. And the just, dogs must be freaking out. Dogs love it. You got like a half an acre for a backyard. <laughs> Well, you uh, had no backyard. Well, yeah. it's pretty deep in comparison. There was nothing like, where would you just go to the dog park? Uh, no, we just go around the neighborhood yeah. for a while. There's no grass. Right. 
Yeah. Everybody wants to uh, have a shit on the grass. Yeah. <laughs> I had a friend of mine. Anyway, we're not going to get into that story. <laughs> I had a friend who shit in my hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what shows are you... Uh, are you going to go on the road? Is there any Kill Tony shows that are going to be on the road? You know, ever since COVID, we kind of we kind of stopped because uh, just you know how it's been. Like uh, you, we had all this all this shit booked, and then it got canceled. And then we got tried to rebook it, and then COVID mm. came back, and then it got canceled. And so we're just you know I think Tony he's been on the road a lot doing his stand up and and with Rogan and stuff like that, and and uh, I'm doing two shows a week here. And so it's just it, it's it used to make sense when we lived in LA because it was like that's where you go to make money you go on the road to make money, but out here it's like wait I'm making way more money just staying here. You that's know? what I was telling people. They go, to, well, how come they how come they won't come out here? And I go, you got to look at it this way, you know the the you it had to be a disgusting amount of money for you to get not to want to sleep in your own bed. Right. Yeah. And and. Also, when we had, you know, when the, the, like the old show, we had uh, Jeremiah and everybody was in the band, you know. Yeah, so like we would all go. Yeah, there's like 15 people right. in the group. Yeah, so now we have like a real band. So uh, we probably, if we went on the road, we probably wouldn't bring a band, you know. So you just, would or would probably wouldn't because that would be yeah. way too expensive to like bring out our whole band. So it's it's just a different. We'll probably do it again when it makes sense, like you said. Yeah. When it's like, oh, we could tr we could charge this much money and mm -hmm. you know and play in like a big fucking theater. Well, you, know? you did Manchester, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah, we go, did Manchester. Yeah, yeah. and uh, what other? Just two cities in England. Uh, we did England? Did you get sick? Yeah, we got food poisoning, <laughs> and that. But that we got food poisoning in Ireland. And then we, the next day, we went to Manchester, I believe. Oh, and, uh, there's nothing worse than being, uh, having food sickness in Europe. Oh, it's the worst. It's a dredge. And, and just coming out both ends at the airport, <laughs> like, <laughs> feeling like, like, literally feeling like we were dying. Like, we should all, like, sweating. Back, like, yeah. we should all have been in the hospital. Yeah. I could barely walk. And of course, you didn't want to like act like that when you're going through security and stuff like yeah. that. And is he contagious? Right. So then I remember one part. Tony gave me this like plastic bag. It was like a, one of those bags through the security checkpoint where you put like things in. I don't know what it was. Yeah, just a yeah. Big plastic, little plastic bag like this big. And he goes, "You want this just in case?" I'm like, "Yeah, I guess so." And I get on the plane, and I remember I was like, "Oh my god, I got to puke right now!" And so I grab the bag, and, <laughs> and I go like this under my coat. I go, <laughs> And I threw up this bag, like I mean, the bag was like, like huge, a, like, like a Canadian like, bag of milk. Yeah, like a watermelon, the size of a water, <laughs> just filled to the rim. And I had to keep it underneath my coat. The I'm person next to me, by <laughs> this. <That's yeah>. a... <laughs> the person next to me didn't see me somehow, so I I tied it in a. Well, and then when I got off the plane, oh, you I was took like, it off the plane? Yeah, because I had nowhere to put it. There's a bathroom. You could just walk to the back of the plane. I couldn't stand up. Oh, I, I, I couldn't do anything. Oh and, no! And like I, I like I was about to die. Yeah. And so finally, the plane lands in Manchester, or whatever. And I just remember I was like, oh god, I need to hide this somewhere. Cause there was no trash cans anywhere. No, but you know why? Because, because, because we were the in, bombs. Yeah. They it, put bombs in the garbage cans, right. the IRA and stuff. So I had to like I put it underneath like a, a chair. And I just set my little puke bag down there and uh, you left, left puke? my puke bag. And I just can't imagine like somebody finding it, you know, like, what the hell is this? You know, uh, someone's going to step on I that know. bag. That's the problem. It, it, it was so crazy because I think it was like, I don't know. I just remember thinking, like, how crazy is that? Like, uh, I, I think like um, COVID happened like shortly after that. I was like, what if it was my puke bag in Manchester that started the whole thing? <laughs> I used to <laughs> urinate in water bottles mm. and then put them under the front wheel of parked cars. Oh, that's so awesome. when they roll over them, it sprays piss onto the sidewalk. I like that. And that's you cool. can sit across the street. That's a good one. It's good, right? Yeah, it was a, a mistake one. in the beginning, but I figured I was on to something. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was a period of time, like I think a full year, where I never used uh, an indoor restroom. Really? I shit outside. Why? I was. Uh, I don't think I've ever shit out. Well, no, and we can't. I be. mean, like on sidewalks, at, what? Like, like in public, all the time. Ugh, fucking Canadians. I don't know. I don't know. I was going through something. That's weird. It was a weird, a weird time. Weirdo. I was making some adjustments as a person. 
You must have had a weird summer or two where you're a little ashamed of yourself. Not to like that. I mean, I, I guess the. Uh, no, nothing like that. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't have to be like that. No, I mean, I think the grossest thing on is when I was addicted to. Me and my friends were addicted to a keyboard cleaner, what? and we were just like like huffing, huffing, you know, huffing <laughs> keyboard cleaner. And my friend did it uh, while he was driving us, and he passes out. Yeah. And, the, and we were going towards like a railroad track, like like up a railroad track thing. And so I had to like, I was like, what the fuck? And I'm grabbed the steering wheel. And I just pulled the emergency brake and it's car skidded and like hit the side thing. And then he blamed me. He said, well, let me fuck my car up. And I'm like, well, you're the one that was driving, dude. And you passed yeah, out. It's weekend at Bernie's <laughs> yeah. in the front seat. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I've been in a few, uh, I got a few car accidents. Have you ever uh, been in a car accident? Not one that it was my fault that I can think of. I was in a car accident with Russell on the way to the movies really? around Christmas time. Yeah, it was weird at an intersection there. He got plowed into. Was it bad? It was pretty bad. And the weirdest part, the weirdest part was, is um, no one was really hurt. We were banged up a little bit as far as just like, holy shit, that just happened. But then the lady was talking to us in the front of the, it was a Mercedes. She's, she's like, uh, on a live call, she calls the car to see if everyone's all right. They're sending them ambulance on the way. I don't, some sort right. of internal. On-star. Is that what that yeah, is? Yeah, OnStar. My, yeah. my car is that. How do you like your car? I love it, man. It's fast. and uh, You got it all murdered out? Uh, oh, which, which car? The, the Tesla. Tesla. Oh, the Tesla. I, love, I like the Tesla. I don't like it as much as I used to like it. It... it uh, uh, it, 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 there's always tesla always has this problem with there's always little things that bug me about it you know just little little tiny things and it's always updated they update the car like every month they'll have a new update like an iphone mm -hmm. and then then like an update will cause something to happen something annoying to happen so it's one constantly, step forward two yeah back yeah it's kind of, of like thing. that and it's kind of bugging me i mean it's it's good i i'm more in love with my other car i got the the supra and that's just such a fun car i forgot what how fun yeah like having a little sports car is i'm holding out until you know this self-driving thing takes full effect right when we're actually our we're right. our hands are taken away from it then i'll get a car i mean it's pretty close there i mean last night my car drove me home yeah you know so but. yeah and you how long did it take you to get comfortable with this it did take a while I, you do have to trust it but the thing is it's like you're still holding the steering wheel a little bit and you're still paying attention it's not like you're just like drive me home and then you you're going to bed is it like riding your bicycle with your hands off the handlebars right kind of like that so you're you're like even if it does something that a little sketchy you could always be like eh, you're not doing that you know so it's not like it's it's cool though it's really nice because when especially when you're tired or something it's like you drive i'll i'll be here you know just making sure you do it you're doing it right but it's it kind of is and it's it's nice to have your car drive you. Weren't you saying something about that sometimes drivers will brake check you and fuck up your shit? Yeah, I have a joke about it, but yeah. 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 Is that a real thing? No, it, no. I mean oh. it, it's something that I <laughs> it's just a joke I wrote. Oh. But uh but yeah, it's uh but it, it does that's one bad thing about the self driving car though. If you're like next to a car and it detects like the car's like about to like go into your lane or something like that, you'll like slam on the brakes and it's kinda of scary. It's like, Whoa, what the fuck? you know. And it's weird allowing the seatbelt to be in control. Like with a steering wheel, there's some bracing involved, mm -hmm. but when you're relaxed mm -hmm. in the chair, and then you yeah. have to do this. Yeah. I fell asleep once on the couch on three grams of mushrooms, and I thought someone had wrapped piano wire around me and threw me in the water. Like piano <laughs> wire. Do you a, still do mushrooms? Yeah, of course. That's it's cool. one, of the, one of the nicest things yeah. you can have in your life. I haven't done them in a while, but... Uh, they're always on the table mm -hmm. as far as, uh, and it, it, that's purely on the company. Right. You know what I mean? There's just certain things that you yeah. want to set the tone. Absolutely. Um, when, when was the last time you went on a mushroom trip? Because you guys would uh, go out to the desert and shit like that. Uh, I think the last time. Ari's Mushroom Fest. I never did any of that shit. Uh, <laughs> now, see, like that to me sounds like a nightmare, a bunch of. Like comedians hire yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, people I don't wanna, that you see all day, every that. day, anyway. Yeah, I'm too old for that. Yeah, I, I'm more of like me and Janice go do mushrooms on the beach or something like that. I think the last time we did mushrooms was me and Janice uh, in San Diego or something. My girlfriend and uh, no, where was it? Uh, huh? 
Um, but it seems like the last couple times, mushrooms have just kind of been like, my brain's telling me, man, you need to stop doing this. You're not going to get anything from this anymore. I've just done mushrooms so many times. and That's what I, alcohol was for me. Yeah. Yeah. I could feel the, the fun was wearing off of it, mm -hmm. but I was feeling that uh, I was not really getting any traction. If anything, I was... It was dropping the the fulfillment of being right. dr drunk. Yeah, alcohol to me, uh, I, it's definitely the hangovers have gotten so bad lately that <laughs> that, was, that yeah, number one. It's for not sure. it's not as fun anymore. Like it, I'll I'll probably take some time off soon uh, from it just because of the hangovers. Not because I mean when I'm drinking it's fine. You know I, I like it, but I'm also not drinking and getting super plastered in public or anything like that. Yeah, um, which I'm shocked. You know, you've had every excuse. First of all, everyone's giving you free booze right. with, between the sponsors. And how many you cannot turn around without somebody offering you right. a cocktail. Right. And th that uh, people don't know that that's every day. Yeah. And it becomes a cycle yeah. of just destruction. That's why I hang out at home a lot more, you know? Yeah. Because, like, I mean, look, Tony, he's out uh, every night, you know, at, at a different <laughs> show. And, you know, he's, I think, drinking way more than he's ever drank in his life. And I would, too, if I was out, because, it, you, like you said, every time you go there, somebody's giving you a bottle of this and drink of this. It's and, Groundhog Day. Yeah. Every city. I don't think I've paid for a drink in, like, two years. You know? I believe it. <laughs> and you've probably, you know, how many free bottles of booze mm. have you handed off to other uh, people? I've never I've never had a alcohol cabinet or a thing full of alcohol until I got this house. Yeah. And when I first got it, of course, I just had, like, some vodka in there and some Jack Daniels. You, you look at it now, it's like a full-on bar. Just yeah. for, it, it's just tons of different bottles of stuff. This city, you know, consumes way more alcohol than and Sunset Strip. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Definitely. way more. Definitely. Hard drinkers. Everyone drinks out here. Yeah. It's crazy. Seven days a week. Yeah. You know, you can't tell a Thursday from a Saturday in this town. Right. The, the drinking strips. But I think people drive in from neighboring cities just to get shit corked mm -hmm. in Austin. Yeah. Because they don't want to puke on their own streets. Right. <laughs> they come down here, which that was kind of an adjustment, was uh, 6th Street, where we spend most of our time, uh, reminds me of Queen Street in Toronto in, like the, in the 80s and stuff. And friends of mine had to come over, and it, this, this town is kind of like the 80s. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it feel like it? Yeah, yeah. All the kids are wearing clothes that friends of mine had committed suicide in, in <laughs> high school. Right. It's an interesting kind of thing. But there is, as you know, uh, you're, you're seeing literally, what, 50 new comics a week in mm -hmm. the city? Mm -hmm. Yeah. there's a, I mean, the comedy's definitely blowing up here. A lot, so many people are moving here to be comic, comics yeah. and stuff. Blowing up in the sense that a lot of people that decided to do comedy within the last two to four years... Is kind of the thing. If you're under, if you're under thirty, and you've been uh, interested or been doing comedy for more than two or three years, that's the majority here. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a majority. Of, so, what do you uh, like? What are people come here and they expect something from the show immediately? Uh, doing the Kill Tony show, and um, what uh, like it is a lottery, and you just have to keep coming to do the show. Right. I think a lot of people get their dreams crushed by the show, too. <sighs> That's my favorite, actually. Uh, I was, yeah. I was trying to get a... <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, out of... I mean, let's say we have 10 people. We pull 10 people's names out of a bucket of show, which is actually kind of high. I think it's more usually around seven. But I'd say out of the 10, usually it's only one or two people that actually shine. Yeah. You know? And... and uh and out of the the rest, some of them are just kind of eh, but most of them are just like don't ever do comedy anymore or whatever that was. It, you only had, you had a minute, which sure it's hard to do a minute worth of comedy, but when you, you're not even doing a joke in a minute, that's just just get out while you can. How do you feel about people that uh, entered the lottery to get on the show that have never done comedy before? I don't see. I don't think this is a show for that. You know, I, a lot of people do do that where it's yeah. the first time, and sometimes you a know, lot it's of them, surprising. Fifty like percent 
straight up fans. Right. I never even thought about comedy, but I want right. to be part of this. And right. then the other I don't half, like that. I hate that's the the thing I yeah. hate is when people are like just fans and they sign up just to be on the show because they like the show. And you see the kids in the cage. Yeah. They're just like uh, yeah. And then you I've have been like, in this box for months. Okay. And there is people don't I, I don't know if you see this oh if you're a fan of the show, but when you come through the door, there's two pig pens mm -hmm. on either side. Right. You're literally in a Cramped. cage with a bunch of other people. Yeah, homeless Some people are people. people. Schizophrenic. Yeah, schizophrenic. Smell like pee. Yeah. Uh, there's been no shortage of like social rejects and right. maniacs. Mm -hmm. You've had murderers on the show. Oh, yeah. Purse house. Murderers. That was wild. Because yeah. the guy was like Superman good looking. Yet he tossed his girlfriend from a he was, third story. He was a weirdo, though. Yeah. He was a weirdo. American psycho. Yeah. He's probably got a clean house. Right. Yeah, that was fun. And I loved how I, because uh, all these news channels were trying to yeah. interview me, and I took, I was like, said yes to all of them. And, but <laughs> every so, like, Fox interviewed me. It was on TMZ. Me. Mm -hmm. So Fox came to my house and interviewed me. So because it was Fox, I wore a tie and I combed my hair to the side. <laughs> and then NBC, no, no. like NBC, interviewed me and I had like a, a tie dye shirt, sure. and, you know, and like you, a beanie on or you something. Dressed for the politics <laughs> yeah. of the show. Uh, That's I need to find those videos because that, that was really funny. And I think that was like an inside joke what I was doing. Like you know, yeah, but, uh, Segura also does live morning shows as a rapper. He is an alias or something. What? Have you seen Tom do? I saw him on some morning show clips, and he wear would wear like a gold chain, oh, and really? talk and slang and stuff. Oh, really? I didn't in know in that. character through the whole thing. That's hilarious. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. Christina's been around a minute. Yeah, Christina's been around. Um, I just went to their new studio, which is really cool. I did in that. Austin. Yeah, your did. mom's house is in Austin, by the way. Yeah. And doc, I did Doctor Drew, and uh, recently, yeah, I did it like three weeks ago. Oh, I just saw Lucas on it. Yeah, so he, that he, he recorded a bunch. Okay, like, uh, so I'm in there. So I don't know when it's going to come out. I hate that when they do that. They'll record like ten episodes, mm -hmm. and then they'll release it two months later. It's just like, yeah. Well, what are we even? Are we talking about anything that's you know relevant, relevant now. anymore? Yeah, you're you either you either go live or within seven days you're dropping. Kill Tony. something yeah uh kill Tony, yeah we we have we have the covid two week uh burn on right now still where we we have two weeks in the bag at all times mm -hmm. and that was mostly just because of covid because you know it was like hey one of us has covid and we have such a big team that would, probably means we all have covid if somebody gets it so we can't just not have a show you know how many out. episodes have you had to put on the shelf because of internal problem with the guests uh i think i know recently but i think we only have well we definitely have we have like that episode recently then we have like uh maybe three episodes that we haven't released and one is just because it was just a shit show like it was one of those shows where <sighs> nothing was funny nothing was good and we were just like just put the, was it you know, Danny Brown? No, that one was I think Phoenix, Arizona. And you said that was one of the the least Danny Brown ever. people. Yeah, the yeah. Danny Brown episodes. He's fucked are, up, right? He's, yeah. But and then uh, <laughs> then we have two Skankfest episodes uh, that we haven't released, and that was just kind of like we'll release it someday. It's just now it's like it makes no sense to release an episode that's like three years yeah. old. Uh, I think we originally didn't release it because I don't even remember. I think we just had too many episodes at that time. Yeah, you because know, when you do skank fest, it's like, oh, here's two more episodes now. And now it's like, how are we going to release these? You know, know. were you happy to have made the last skank fest and see Saget and Gilbert Godfrey for the last time? Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, that's very sad. It's terrible. Yeah, Saget was so nice. Godfrey yeah. was so yeah. nice. Um, Hanging it, out with a bunch of kids, yeah, like they would look like I look like an in sound clean house, insane, insane clown say posse, uh, uh, sh event, yeah, with all the uh, you know, that audience is uh, you know, saying it's alleged, like he's done a bunch of things, mm -hmm. really funny, shit. yeah, he's very tall, he's very tall, mm -hmm. and Gilbert was the exact opposite, man. Yeah. Like, I, we did a show with him in New York at Gramercy. And when he was in the green room, it was just this little tiny, he like, he I was like a li tiny like, little tiny man. And he always like, he was one of those guys too, which I found really funny as he's one of those guys that like, uh, will look around the green room and 
take the bottle of wine and put it in his book bag and you know take uh, all the coffee no little, way you know, the sugar like, packets yeah and stuff. All the sugar pack i think like, that's an old person it, thing. it's an like old person thing definitely but it was just very funny how he, can't couple candies out yeah. of the dish yeah. yeah no i think it's probably when you're raised by uh parents that have gone through the depression or worse mm -hmm. um these little sample things, right? They squirrel them away because yeah. you know when you open up a, your parents' drawer and it's like, how long are you gonna yeah. keep this shit for? Right. Yeah. yeah. Pack rats. My parents did it, but only did it with like those little, little shampoos at hotels and like lotions yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I started gabbing those things too because as a traveler, as a traveler, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I'd be throwing out whole tubes of toothpaste, mm -hmm. and I'm like, fuck, it's sixty bucks. I'm washing my ass. Yeah. Mm. I don't know, but um, I'm gonna go travel. Yeah, where are you going? Canada, if yeah. I can get in. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm why, really having why, a hard time. I, I closed the secret show last night right. with the idea of like, I said, uh, this is the first time I'm feeling bad about leaving the city I've been living in. Right. So, but that's going to be cool. And um, some other How long shows, are you going to be gone for? Uh, until early November. Oh, my God. Two months. Jesus. You uh, always do that, though. You always leave for. I figure, you know. I, if I have to get on an airplane, I, I want to be gone for at least a month. It make it worth wild, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, go over to Denmark. I'm doing a bunch of shows in Denmark, and then uh, uh, the first week in November in Sweden, and then I'll be back here to do. And I'm going to prepare my Christmas uh, yeah. performance. Car washes, uh, picnics. Yeah, car washes, <laughs> picnics. What's the what other ones? Let's let's get these. Uh, There's five for five minutes. Teeth, teeth, mm -hmm. teeth, uh, car washes and picnics. Yeah, uh, how, how about? Uh, I don't want to do flowers. Kites. <laughs> this is all <laughs> kites. Gardening tips. No, no. Now we're wandering <laughs> over. We we got to stick to uh, <laughs> picnics, car washes, <laughs> teeth, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's uh, furniture. These are all very okay. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna do that. Uh, Why do they call it a love seat? <laughs> no, I'm not doing the Seinfeld. I'm actually gonna craft some very clean material. But how how well? If I get a, uh, is there a bonus gift if I uh, get an applause break? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do squeaky scream, but I'm going to be full costume. You won't even recognize me. I'm going to do prosthetics, <laughs> fake mustache. I'm going to look like Burt Reynolds if he grew up in Miami. Mm -hmm. You should also grow out a mustache. It doesn't look good. I look like uh, Tom Hanks in Philadelphia, <laughs> where he's dying. It, it looks like you have mustache. Oh, I can grow it, but it, it just doesn't suit my face. I'm not a big on. It's either a beard. It doesn't fit. Years. Mustaches don't fit anybody's face. Look There's at. There's some people that can rock it. Yeah, I, don't know. I think even when they rock it, they don't really rock it. It's still a mustache. Yeah, most of them look stuck on anyway. Tony's looks like it's like that pencil one. Like yes. Well, yeah, it has that uh, the fencing mustache. Yeah, yeah, fencing. You know, Errol Flynn type yeah, stuff. That's that's what I was thinking. Of. Something where. You know, mm -hmm. you can twist the ends. <laughs> I think maybe just grow a half beard. No. no. I could no? no. Maybe a goatee. What about, have you ever had a goatee? I did. I listened to a lot of Alice in Chains. Ah. So I had a, a chin strap there, a big long goatee. I, but never, I was shaved the, shaved the top. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's it. That's it. We're finished. Good. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, Thanks, Brian. Thanks, buddy. Where can people uh, check you out? Every Monday at Vulcan Gas Company, yeah. 8 o'clock. That's right. Tickets sell out two months in advance. Secret shows every Thursday, which is, uh, Jason's on a lot, uh, and that's like 15 comics and nonstop. Yeah. You can't get more bang for your buck on a Thursday right. at that show. Mm -hmm. You never know who's going to show up. Yeah. And not to mention, like, you know, the guests that you've had just – in this city alone i that was one of the things i thought about i go who are they where are they going to pull from mm -hmm. but when everything kind of you know when you see ron white and mm -hmm. uh tim dylan and fucking i can't tell you how nice it was to see duncan trussell in the green room hey man hey guys hey 
Thanks for being on the thanks, show, buddy. Brian. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for being uh, hanging out, Janice, and watching two grown men mumble to each other yeah, in yeah. these Her magic sticks. Favorite thing to do. Bye. Bye. We would like to see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. I don't care what society thinks. They're nothing anyway. They're no better than me. Until we have a safe word, we will not stop. Have you ever thought what it would be like to see a person's head amputated? Think, think of things so horrible that the human mind cannot imagine them. See all this and more when you see on stage in person that crazy makes up. I like being set apart from people. I like to be hated. Safe word with Jason. <laughs>